Let's talk about a couple of players who were activated from the practice squad for tomorrow's game. Look at why Mahomes needs to spread the ball all the way around. CEH needs to see a lot of touches. Justin Reed and Nick Bolton got to lead very well. And many more keys that will lead to the Chiefs' victory against the Cardinals tomorrow. But first, how about those... What's up, guys? My name is Cole, aka the man, the myth, the legend, the red-bearded king of the kingdom, and I do daily news about the Kansas City Chiefs, so definitely make sure to sub if you haven't already. You little sinner, hit that like button if you think Derek Carr is very mid, just like any barbecue outside of Kansas City, and let's get into this video, starting with a shout-out to the nearly 80 members, 79 at the time of recording, to be exact, that have joined channel memberships so far, joined the HBTC community, and also for the five Redbeards, Randy Moran, Robert Firestone, Steve Atkins, Austin Wall, and Britt Lions, you freaking legends. All of y'all's support is gonna take this channel to new heights over the course of the season, and I'm very freaking grateful for that. Let me tell you what. If you wanna know more about memberships and what perks are offered, all that good stuff, make sure to click that join button and just Give it a look. That's all that I ask. All right, Chiefs news. The Chiefs announced today that they are activating two players from the practice squad via standard elevation, and those two players are wide receiver Darius Fountain and linebacker Elijah Lee. And here's the rules on these practice squad call-ups according to the NFL. Teams can promote up to two players per week from the practice squad to the active roster via standard elevation, bringing the 53-man roster to 55 players, which in this case with the Chiefs right now, it's 54. These players can be elevated three times during the course of the season, reverting to the practice squad the following week. They are not subject to waivers when they revert back to the practice squad. NFL teams must decide to elevate players by 3 p.m. Central the day before a game is played and I believe have to go back down to the practice squad immediately following the game the next day. So the Chiefs now have 54 players who can suit up on game day tomorrow, but only 46 can actually be active. So that means the Chiefs are going to have to make at least eight of those 54 players inactive, which means they're not going to suit up for tomorrow's game. And interestingly enough, just because Darius Fountain and Elijah Lee have been elevated from the practice squad for tomorrow's game, that doesn't mean they have to be active. So that's a bit weird to me for the team to call them up from the practice squad for tomorrow's game, yet have them sit on the bench without a uniform on. But hey, what do I really know at the end of the day? Not all that much. However, if they do decide to suit these guys up, Fountain could be used pretty heavily on special teams as he was initially projected to be wide receiver six on the roster and be used for exactly that purpose. Special teams. Elijah Lee was taking the starting snaps at Sam linebacker for the majority of the preseason, but Pete Sweeney from Arrowhead Pride thinks rookie linebacker Leo Chanel may be working into that role as he appeared to start there during the last preseason game. So we shall see what happens. If Chanel does indeed start there and Elijah Lee is activated, expect Elijah to play special teams, which is something he did as well during the preseason. And from here, I want to talk about some keys. I got the keys. Key. Okay, no. I want to talk about some keys to victory for the Chiefs, which basically every other channel, podcast, Twitter account, blah, 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 have already talked about 60 different ways, but none of them have a nice red beard. So I figured I'd weigh in as well. What I want to do is give you three defensive keys three offensive keys, and then a couple of bonus keys after that. So let's start with the defense. Three keys. The first key to success is contain that very little, but very fast QB, Kyler Murray. Don't let him get outside the pocket and run away like a little pansy. One way to prevent that is to be strategic on how you rush him and blitz him. Chris Jones said in his presser this week that they have been working on that very thing leading up to this game. Um, we got to find a way to contain him, look through the game plan, um, practice through it. We don't have anyone as fast as Kyler Murray or as, as uh, dynamic as him, but we got to get some reps as a D-line as um, Cajun Rush and getting after it. And while they may have nobody as fast as Kyler Murray, who runs like a 4.340, on the team, Coach Reed alluded to using the newly signed QB on the practice squad, former Steeler Chris Oladukan, in a similar way to Kyler, to try and prepare the best way they could. Yeah, so we had our young quarterback in there doing it. He, he moves around pretty good, so you know he played for the Jackrabbits. He's pretty quick, so 
He, he did a nice job, though, for us. I also love that Andy Reid paused after his jackrabbit joke, waiting for laughter, and nothing happened. I picture many of my jokes that I do off script and my videos landing the same exact way. So, hey, I feel you, coach. Trust me. Anyway, back to the game. Another way they will probably try to contain Kyler is by having at least one QB spy on him at all times, which many are assuming to be Willie Gay Jr. Could be someone else, or they could kind of rotate. I don't know, but containing that freaking man is a must, so a QB spy must be had. The next key to success is going to be on the new guys. The shoulders of the rookies. Will Carl Loftus use his relentless motor to get pressure at key times? Will rookie cornerbacks Trent McDuffie, Joshua Williams, and even Jalen Watson, if they play him, be able to minimize mistakes early? Will linebacker Leo Chanel take advantage of the opportunities he gets when out on the field? And the same goes for safety Brian Cook. So many rookies. The third defensive key is going to be on linebacker Nick Bolton and safety Justin Reed and how quickly they are able to adjust to leading the defense. This is Bolton's first year wearing the green dot and Justin Reed's first year on the team. And both of these guys are going to be expected to go out there and lead the defense in various aspects on the field. So if we see Kyler Murray somewhat contained, the rookies rising to the occasion and Nick Bolton and Justin Reed leading quickly and well, the defense should be pretty freaking good to go if you ask me. As far as the offensive side of the ball is concerned, I'm going to give you three keys as well as a couple bonus keys after that, so make sure to stick around for those. The first offensive key is on Mahomes and his ability to gel with the new receiving core. Will he indeed be spreading the ball all around or is he going to default to looking too much at one to two targets such as Travis Kelsey and, I don't know, Juju Smith-Schuster, for example. We all know Mahomes looked for Tyreek Hill last year to a fault at times, with Mahomes himself saying sometimes he'd quit going through his read progression and just focus up on Tyreek because he knew that Tyreek would find a way to get open. Pretty incredible, if you ask me, but... That's now a thing of the past. Tyreek is bye-bye. So will Mahomes be doing what he's done all preseason, throwing the ball to six plus different targets? He makes it seem like that's exactly what they will be doing. The biggest thing is it's going to be, I think there's going to be a, like a different player every single game that has the big game. It's not going to be just necessarily Tyreek and Travis every single week where it's like one or the other is having a big game or both. It's going to be every single week it's going to be someone different. So I'm sorry to all you fantasy football uh, guys, but it's going to be, it's going to come from everywhere. So you're going to have to kind of choose the right guy every week. Like I said, I think it's just going to be a well di diverse offense where everybody's going to get the ball. Uh, so it'll be hard for uh, defenses to game plan against, but I'm interested to see how defenses are going to, are going to go against us. Are they going to do the shell stuff? that we saw most of the year, are they going to do what the Bengals did against us in the AFC Championship game, or are they going to go back to going with defenses they, they feel the most confident with? So uh, I'm excited for that, but we have answers for it all, and uh, we're excited just to get out there and play. Well, Patrick, we are also excited to see you all get out there and play, so let's freaking go. The second key is going to be on the offensive line, particularly the tackles, Orlando Brown Jr. on the left, and especially Andrew Wiley on the right, and the limited reps that Mahomes took with the first team offense this preseason, there were some lost reps by both Orlando and Wiley, which stressed me out and caused a pass to be tipped, Mahomes to get absolutely drilled, among other things. Protect the neck of Mahomes at all times, please, and thank you and give him time to go through his reads as he aims to throw the ball every which way. I think the O-line is a definite strength of the team, don't get me wrong there, and that will be much needed for protecting Patrick, but also establishing an effective run game. The last offensive key is for them to get out there and score quickly, efficiently, and early. Doing so will establish a lot of confidence in the new guys who were not here last year, which is a lot of people. Juju, MVS, Sky Moore, Justin Watson, Isaiah Pacheco, Ronald Jones, if he suits up, among others. If they can get out there and score quickly, it's going to build confidence and lead to momentum that I believe will result in a very high scoring game, especially with the Cardinals dealing with injuries at the cornerback position, but also JJ Watt as well has a calf injury of sorts and may play, yes, but if he does, he's not gonna be at 100%, at least from what I understand. Now for the bonus keys, and then I'm gonna give you my prediction for the final score of the game. The bonus keys are both to do with the run game on offense. The run needs to be established for the sake of the rest of the offense, duh, Cole, but Here's why. CEH has a lot on the line this season being a former first round pick from 2020, and he spent the first two years of his career injured multiple times. And because of that, I believe he's very motivated to produce and go off. Give him the ball and let him eat, especially if the defense is giving the Chiefs light boxes as expected to try and prevent 
Mahomes and company from going off and getting like 500 yards in the air. The next bonus key is, I think rookie running back Isaiah Pacheco needs to see some touches very early on to get the first game jitters out of his system. Pacheco is a threat because of his speed and will be returning kicks because of that, but I also think the Chiefs will be using him this season, especially as a catch passing back. Therefore, he's got to see touches early and get that confidence established. So to recap, for the defense, contain that mini man, Kyler Murray, pray the rookies click very early and minimize mistakes, and then Nick Bolton and Justin Reed got to come out the gate leading effectively. On offense, Mahomes needs to spread the ball everywhere. The offensive line needs to hold up, especially the tackles Orlando Brown Jr. and Andrew Wiley. The Chiefs need to score quickly and early, and the bonus keys, CEH needs to touch the ball a lot pause, in my opinion, and Pacheco needs to see touches early on to establish confidence. And of course, there's always the obvious things that you can do as well. Minimize turnovers, be efficient on drives, don't punt, few to no penalties, blah, blah, freaking blah, but those are a given. And now, speaking of the word give, I'm gonna give you all my prediction for the final score of this game, and that is this. The Chiefs go absolutely bananas on offense, putting up 35 points while the Cardinals score 24. Even with the Cardinals injuries and receiving core mishaps like D hop suspension. I think the Chiefs' young defense could possibly still give up more points than they'd like to as they still are finding themselves as a unit and the rookies shake their nerves off from this being the first game of the regular season. I wouldn't be surprised to see some unfortunate penalties on the rookie cornerbacks preventing drives from stalling and adding to the points that Arizona will ultimately score, but even with all that being said, Chiefs 35, Cardinals 24, week one W, so let's freaking Go, what do you guys think about my keys to victory and the final score prediction? Where am I off here? Let me know your thoughts on all this in the comments down below. And let's throw haymakers down there per usual. Make sure to leave a super thanks or bearded comment to be featured in an upcoming vid. Sub, like, you know the deal. And check out this video here, pew pew. Which is why the Chiefs will scorch the entire league this year. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those?